Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am so excited to be here today. You know, just being able to share his word is a thrill to my heart. And I don't just say that. This is the best time of my day when I get to teach or preach his word to someone. I'm excited because God is opening up new doors for us here at Breaststroke. I'm just so excited that other people will begin to hear this life-changing word. When I was going home today to redo hair and makeup, I always go to the office for a while, and then I go home and I uh, touch up makeup, touch up hair, make sure everything's okay, come to the studio. Well, on my way home, I went to my mailbox. Now, a few days ago, when I went to my mailbox, there were a couple of ants in my mailbox. And then I haven't been since that day. And I went today on my way home, and there were hundreds of ants in my mailbox. I had to literally stand in the middle of the road and shake every piece of mail off. And now I'm going to put ant traps in my mailbox. Oh, it was, it was terrible. But God always speaks to me. He always is faithful to speak to me. And he reminded me that it was unattended. Had I attended to the few ants I had seen a few days ago, there would not be hundreds of ants making a home in my mailbox. Um, very much at home in my mailbox. They were multiplying. They were setting up restaurants, and I think there was a hotel or two that I'd seen in there. I mean, they, they just were making roads, and they were just setting themselves up a little village in my mailbox. And God spoke to my heart. He said, that's what happens when things are unattended. An unattended prayer life can disappear. An unattended worship life can stop giving glory to God. An unattended reading word life can make you very vulnerable to the enemy. Unattended relationships can fall apart so much more easily. Things that are unattended to tend to suffer the gravest of consequences. And it was just a reminder from my father, and I'm, so I'm just gonna pass that on to you. We cannot leave things unattended in our spiritual lives. We need to pray and keep praying. We need to read and keep reading and study and keep studying. Keep knocking on the doors. Keep believing the promises. Keep going to church. Keep attending Bible studies. Keep up fellowships and relationships. Because if we don't do it, the enemy will come in like those ants and set up house in those areas of our lives. And we, don't, we can't afford that. The time is too short and the price is too, too much of a price to pay. It's a critical moment. So I'm just passing it on that if you see a couple of ants, just deal with the couple of ants so that you don't have an infestation in any part of your spiritual life. Amen? Amen. And a double amen. <laughs> Last week was a, a special week for breaststroke. And I don't mean special like in an astounding kind of way. It was special because a lot of the people around my ministry, the women who surround me, who are on my board, my friends, um, people close to me, it seemed to be an all-out assault from the enemy on our physical bodies, on family members, uh, on relationships. I mean, we were just being attacked left and right. In fact, I'd had a conversation with my primary care physician, who was also a Christian, and he said this. He said, if you're not being shot at, you're not in the battle. And he's right. If you're not being shot at, you're not in the battle. Well, we were being shot at a lot last week. And so I called a special prayer time. And I just called in the women that I knew could um, pray and pray and pray. I called in women who could um, confound the enemy with their prayers. I called in women who understood what it was to pray in the spirit, to pray in faith, to pray believing. And we met at my office, and there were maybe 12 or 13 of us, maybe 14. And we just hit the ground running. We began to pray over one another. 
we began to speak into one another. There were words of wisdom and words of knowledge being spoken. There were um, laying on of hands and anointing. There, it was just a special time. And though there were many things accomplished and broken off that night, not everyone was healed. At that moment, we, I, we were believing that everything would break off, that there would be a miraculous healing in all of us. Those of us who had suffered for a longer period of time, we just believed that this was the moment. We still believe that was the moment. But it hasn't fully manifested in our bodies yet. And I could tell that there was going to be some discouragement because we really went in believing that God was just going to do it like that. Now, my God has never disappointed me. Let me just say that at the outset. He has never, ever disappointed me. It may not come when I want it, but it comes when he wants it. My healing, my deliverance, the promises, the provision, it always comes when it's perfectly timed by God, not by Jenny Fister. But I sat myself down with the Lord, and I knew I needed to find a way to encourage those who had not been immediately and miraculously touched. And God laid out this Bible study. And it's such a study, it was such a powerful study, that on my way into the office, my secretary, who reads over it, checks the scriptures and all of those kinds of things, sent me a text and said, I'm broken, I'm in tears, I'm a mess. Because this Bible study spoke to my heart so deeply, and it stirred me so much. It touched her heart because she was one of those that God did not touch immediately. And she was a little discouraged. So I, I want to give this to you because I know that there are many of us out there that God has made promises to, or you have prayed in faith, and you didn't see it at that moment with your natural eyes. You did not see it manifest itself. But I believe. And I've called it I believe, but it's E-Y-E, -E, I believe. I believe in a ram in place of a son, Abraham and Isaac. I believe in a scarlet thread of salvation, Rahab, and the wall of Jericho. I believe you can march around a city and shout, and a city just is destroyed. I believe in a whale as a means of transportation. I believe in a fourth man in a fire with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I believe in divine protection from lions like Daniel. I believe in a burning bush of Moses, a still small voice voice, walking on water like Peter, the blind seeing, the deaf hearing, the lame walking, the parting of a sea, an ark, a cross, and I believe in resurrection. I believe it all, yet I've never seen it with my natural eyes. How can that be? How can I possibly believe in things that I have never seen? I take them for what people would call gospel truth. I believe everything I just told you. I believe Jonah was in a whale. There is no doubt in my mind. I believe that Moses was spoken to through a burning bush. I believe in a Red Sea party. There is not a doubt in my mind, in my spirit, that those things are as they have been given to me through God's word. But I've never seen them. Now, for some, it's a struggle, maybe even a battle that we face in, in struggling to believe. No, oh, it, it may be easy to believe that Jonah was in the belly of a whale, but believing that I am healed when my body is in pain can be a whole other story. But that is exactly what Jesus is calling us to do, to believe with another set of eyes, our spirit eyes, and not our natural eyes. Oh, we've heard Bible studies like this. I, I know. I know, I know, I know, I know. I've heard them. I know. But can you just sit with me for these next few moments? And let me take you on a journey of unbelievable truth and astonishing power. Let me start you off in John chapter 20, verses 24 through 29. Where better to start than right here? Now Thomas, see, this is the best place to start, Downing Thomas. 
Now Thomas, called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord with our own eyes. We have seen the Lord. And so Thomas said to them, Unless I see him, and I see the handprint of his nails, and put my finger in the print of the nails, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Uh, I bet many of us are like Thomas. And after eight days... <laughs> His disciples were again inside. Now, Thomas had doubted for eight days. Eight full days have gone by when Thomas goes, I don't believe it unless I see it. And Jesus was not quick, hear me, to come and show himself to Thomas. He stood in the midst and he said to them, Jesus came to the doors being shut and stood in the midst and said, Peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, reach your finger here and look at my hands. Reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, you have seen me. You have believed. Here it comes. But Blessed, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. There is a blessing that Jesus has for those of us who believe without seeing or seeing the spirit without having it manifested in the natural. I see my healing. Uh, I, I, I see it. I see myself running. Yeah, I, I have a horrible hip, you know, scheduled for a, a hip replacement in a couple of months. And, and so I struggle with even my gait, even just walking at a natural gait. I don't have that. I, I sort of limp and gimp. But I see myself healed. And I don't believe it's going to be by the hip replacement. I believe God's going to heal me before that because I really don't want to go through that surgery and being off of my feet for five or six weeks out of the studio, not being able to do the TV show, not being able to preach and teach. That'd be like a fire shut up in my bones. And it would be so hard for me not to do it. And God has heard my heart and I believe he's going to heal me. I believe that those who have not seen but still know he's real are blessed. Perhaps that's why the psalmist asks God, and this is Psalm 119, verse 18. Psalm 119, verse 18, and the psalmist asks God to open my eyes that I may behold the wondrous things from your law. Behold the wondrous things. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18, he says he prays that the eyes of our hearts might be enlightened, that we might know what is the hope of his calling, that we might know the riches of the glory of his inheritance in us, in the saints. Open the eyes of my heart. That's an old chorus we used to sing. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Right? Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Right? Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. That's what Paul is praying. Not that our natural eyes will be open, but the eyes of our heart. Listen, I know things like gravity and wind and air and oxygen and sound and heat and electricity really do exist. I believe they are real, but I can't see them all. I can see the evidence of them, though. I see the evidence of gravity every time I trip and fall down. I don't fall up, I fall down. I see the, the evidence of heat in the middle of the summer when it rises up off of the hood of my car or the hot asphalt. Uh, I see wind, the evidence of wind when leaves blow. 
I don't see sound waves, but I hear the evidence of sound. See, that's enough to make me believe in these things. Not that I have seen them, but that I've seen the evidence of them. I have seen the evidence of gravity. So why is it so hard to simply believe the things of God that we cannot see with our natural eyes? It's just that. We're trying to see with our physical, natural eyes. I see evidence of God's healing. I've seen it in my own life. He has healed me time and time and time again. I have been a, an evidentiary being of his healing. I have been, it has been manifested in my life. He has delivered me out of sicknesses and diseases and broken bones. He's delivered me out of, I have seen the evidence of his healing. And because I've seen the evidence, I can still believe in my hip being healed, even though I don't see it. Oh, we prayed and prayed over my hip. Oh, my goodness. One woman laid hands on me, and it was like electricity and heat to my body. I knew the spirit was working and hovering and moving. And I walked my faith out, and yet the very next day, I was hurting. But I have not stopped declaring that I am healed. And every time I get up, and I'm telling you, every time I have to remind Satan that he's a liar and that my God is truth. I speak to the dry bones to come alive, to come alive. I know that there's light in me and there's no darkness because sickness is darkness, so it cannot dwell in me. And I remind Satan that he has no fellowship with the light. Darkness and fellowship have no, uh, darkness and light have no fellowship together. He says, by his stripes I'm healed. I believe that when the leadership lays hands on people, they will recover. He promised the Israelites that he would put no diseases on them. I believe that's for us. I believe in the evidence of what I've seen in his word and what I've seen in my own life. I believe. But if I look with my natural eyes, I don't see a healing. I see myself laboring to get in and out of my car. I see myself not being able to find a comfortable place when I'm sleeping. That a lot of nights I have to get up and go sleep in, in the recliner because I just can't find a comf comfortable place in bed. I see myself limping across the parking lot when it's raining and not being able to run. But that's just what my natural eyes see. What my spirit eyes know to be truth is way different. Hebrews 11, the faith chapter, tells us that we are, we, we are sure of what we hope for and certain of things we have not yet seen. That's faith. And the footsteps of the followers of Christ in this chapter, they're like a, a faith class. They teach us faith. And during this present age, they are spoken of as a cloud of witnesses. I have seen these witnesses. Not in my natural eyes, but I have seen Joseph and Jacob and David and Moses and Abraham and Sarah. I've seen them in the word. They are those who believed without seeing because they walked by faith, oh, not by sight. That's 2 Corinthians 5, 7. But 2 Corinthians 4, 18 declares this. And I'm going to read this in the New Living Translation. 2 Corinthians 4, 18. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on the things that cannot be seen. For the things we now see now will soon be gone. Everything on this world in this world is temporal. Everything I see will be gone. But the things which can, we cannot see last forever. Healings are forever. Deliverances are forever. And what Paul is saying to the Corinthian church is don't put your eyes on the medical report. Don't put your eyes on the doctor's report. Don't put your eyes on the pain in your body. This is not a denial of those things. I hurt. My body is in pain, and I'm not, I'm not foolish enough to believe that I'm not hurting. 
There is a severe arthritic condition in a couple places in my body. X-rays have shown it. CAT scans have defined it. But only God is over it. Only God can heal it. Doctors can treat the symptoms, but only God can heal. You see, when a doctor gives a cancer patient chemotherapy, the doctor is treating the symptoms of the cancer, but only God can deliver that person from the cancer. Amen? Amen? Godly faith believes in what I don't see. God pointed out to me that I do not see him, but I believe him. I don't see Christ, but I believe in him. And I don't see the Holy Spirit, and yet I believe. Why? Because I do see the evidence around me of God and of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And as I get to know him, I have the evidence of God's interaction with me. I know I say this a lot, but there's a song that says, I know that my redeemer lives by Nicole C. Mullins. And one of the lines she says at the end is, I know he lives because I spoke with him this morning. I know God is real. And because I know God is real, I know his healing is real. I may not see that healing that Christ paid for. I may not see it yet, but I believe because of the evidence of the word of God, that healing is coming forth. I may not see the healing that he, he paid for, but I believe because of the evidence of the word of God. Now, faith is not denying the reality. It, it understands that God, here it is, it, God can change reality. Faith is not denying reality. Faith understands that God can change your reality. Faith is not blind belief, but it's based on the certainty of God's word. If we break our leg, we do not claim it's healed when the reality is it's broken. We, if we break a leg, we don't get up and just start walking on it. We declare that it's broken, but we declare, declare that God heals. We can claim that Christ died for the healing of that broken leg. We can claim that God's mighty power is working in our body to heal it. We can claim that we are healed in the name of Jesus, believing by faith that that is what he is doing. And we can look into the future to thank God for healing now, believing that he will heal us in his perfect timing. Do you believe what you see? Or do you believe what you know. Do you believe in a healing you cannot see? Do you believe in, in, the, ch in the salvation of children that aren't saved yet? Do you believe in a restored and fruitful marriage even though it's not there today? Do you believe in provision when it's not in your hands yet? Do you believe in a promise that he has yet to fulfill but has given it to you as a promise? Do you see it? Do you see it not here, but do you see it here? I believe, not here, what my eyes see. I believe here, what my spirit eyes know. And one day, soon and very soon, all these things are going to come to full fruition in our lives. I know. I know that I know that I know. I don't know how they're going to come. I don't know when they're going to come. I just know that God has never, ever left us without answering a prayer. Romans 4, 17. I'm going to end here. Romans 4, 17. This is Paul. As it is written. As it is is written. I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls things which are not yet in existence as though they already are. 
God calls things that are not as though they are. He calls things that we can't see yet as if they are already done. That is the promise of God. He says that you may not see it in your natural yet, but I've got the provision in the spirit realm for you. And one day that spirit word will become flesh in you. That spirit healing will become flesh. We just have to believe and not be led by what we see. I would like to tell you that when I first saw the x-rays of my of the parts of my body that are so severely uh, impinged by arthritis that I didn't like shake my head and think, what in the world? In fact, one of my doctors looked at me and he said, how are you still walking? How can you still walk with a hip that looks like that? That's the miracle. That's the miracle that I am, I am still walking and ministering and not in a wheelchair. This is the miracle of God. And so I can see the mercies of God that are getting me through this until he heals it completely. His mercies are new every day. Great is your faithfulness unto us, Lord God. That's Lamentations chapter 3. Great is thy faithfulness. This is the God I know. The God who used a whale, who was the fourth man in the fire, who protects from lions, a burning bush, a still small voice, the blind seeing, walking on water, the deaf hearing, the lame walking, parting a sea, an ark, a cross, and resurrection. I see that and believe it with my heart. Therefore, I believe everything, not with what I see in the natural but I believe what I know to be true in the spirit. He wants you to get to that place. He is so faithful to love on you like that. If you do not know him, let us help you because it's his life he's painting with you one brushstroke at a time. God bless you. Thank you for watching today's program, One Brushstroke at a Time. If you have been blessed by this study, would you share your story with us? We want to hear how God is moving in hearts all around the globe. If you have a question, would like more information, or would like to request prayer, please visit our website at brushstrokeministries.com or connect with us on Facebook at Brushstroke Ministries. You may also contact us at Brushstroke Ministries, P.O. Box 2353, Buchanan, West Virginia, 260. Join Jenny Fister every week at this time to hear a fresh revelation as she paints a beautiful picture of his word, one brushstroke at a time.